of all of the seasons that I've ever had on Football Manager, of all of the cup runs that I've ever been on, this one right here might just be the craziest ever. It is completely insane, and I cannot wait to share it with you. Chucky scores! He's Breaking away, Cover's got himself set If we get Liverpool away, if we get... He's off! He's got to be off! He's on! It's was the season three, a season all about our cup antics. But before we get into those, a couple of transfer updates as teased at the end of episode number two. They've gone. Our American boy and his sidekick, Damalio, our star strikers have departed. Along with quite a lot of the playing squad, to be honest. We are very much now in the realms of needing to rebuild. We talked about it before then, but now it is confirmed. Our strikers that had fired us to back-to-back -to -back titles have both left the club. They, alongside a decent chunk of our playing staff, had their contracts expiring in the summer and had decided to explore their options. At this level, player turnover is pretty common, obviously. And with the sharp rise through the leagues and tight budgets, it would be foolish to expect us to hold on to or stick to the same players in a save like this. However, the two strikers, Augustus McGiff and Amalia Brown-Sterling, had quickly established themselves as cult heroes of the save in my eyes, and their departures were a little more cutting. Fire his shirt number. He didn't have one. He didn't even have a shirt number. That's the weird thing about this. So we, uh, we will say goodbye. For example, Sam French, the goalkeeper, who also left at the end of his contract. I'm not quite sure why I've gone for you there, Sam. I, I do apologise. But then again, we only signed you because you were an adult. We don't actually have a goalkeeper at the club. At least not a goalkeeper that has finished school. So, Brown Sterling departs to Yeovil after scoring 85 goals in 71 games, whilst Augustus McGiff would eventually get his American move without the holiday for our chairman Steve Good. <laughs> Are you serious? He's gone to Atlanta. McGiff, that is not not Steve. Steve's still here. Augustus McGiff's gone to Atlanta. The final player that I was at least a little bit sad to see leave was our centre-back, Josh Robinson. The Rolls-Royce of a centre-back, as I called him previously. I even said when he signed that he was way too good for us. And I don't really know why he chose to come here. But he had a really good spell last season. He was so, so good. He's now moved on to South End. I did, I did put in a 50% sell-on fee into his transfer deal and I promptly cashed it out because I didn't see him moving on from South End and we kind of needed the money. So I've taken £76,000 from him. I think it's quite nice. Subscribe to Clay. Just before we get into the main meat of the summer and everybody's favourite, the new signings, a couple of updates about the development of the club as a whole, or should I say the their lack of development of the club as a whole, because, well, the finances aren't great at this stage. They We've racked up a decent amount of debt, even with the FA Cup runs over the past couple of seasons, and I didn't really see it improving too much at this stage. We just don't make any money. The prize money in the leagues is minimal and we don't have any sponsorships and the ground is small and our reputation is low and we just don't bring very much money in through those gates. We're, we were either going to need a massive away tie in the cup in There's only four ties. or we're going to need a takeover, basically. I've also been asking for a senior affiliate and Steve's like, yeah, definitely. Good idea. But then he goes away to find one and can't find one. He can't find one team to be our senior affiliate. So we don't have the capacity. But however, I have been improving personally. I'm now studying for my Continental A license. So get me. <laughs> right. So into the signings then, the new transfers for season number three. And my word, have we done an absolute madness bringing in some of these players. Before those, there was one or two new contracts for players. Baby Edu got a new contract. George Baker, Marvellous and Luciano Doria Henry. All new contracts. So they're staying for at least another year. And in comes two new strikers. The first of which, Nathan Butler Oyadeji, Known as MBO to his mates, so I'm told. He is going to be the sprint star of our forward line. Ignore the eight finishing. He is goals Guaranteed. Trust me on that one. He's also going to be paired with Caleb Chucky Chukwemeka, former Crawley striker and brother of Chelsea player Carney. He's another that seems just a little bit too good to be playing in this league, right? So again, goals guaranteed. Those two are going to replace McGiff and Brown Sterling. And I've even been in the recording studio recording some new goal songs for them. Chuck, woo, 
More on that later. A new keeper came in to replace the adult that was Sam French. The new man is Brian Oconquo. Three new centre-backs have been brought in. A left-sided one called Luther Williams and a right-sided one called Bailey Spencer Adams. And then, alongside those two, a non-league legend, Jarrell Quantzer. I'm telling you, there must be people watching this that have signed him in their saves, in these non-league saves. Surely, he is a legend of these parts. Six foot five. He's also goals guaranteed from set pieces. And then one thing that I've been really amazed with so far in this save is the sheer number of talented footballers that are available this far down at the footballing pyramid. Released by bigger teams and willing to play for us on very little money as well. I thought I'd hit gold when I found a man with the most French name I've ever seen. Pierre-Yves Pelletier. And to an extent, I had hit gold because he's got 15 passing, 13 vision. Sacre bleu is what I said when I saw him. But hold the phone. He wasn't going to be the most outrageous signing we would make this summer. Because then I found this guy. Welcome, Jamal Awadani, a Spain under-19 international who was willing to come and sign for us. How the bloody hell have we convinced him to come and sign for Worcester City? Look at him. He is, I mean, to me, he is perfect. With these new guys fitting in, the squad would look like this. No change here in terms of shape, tactics, instructions. It seems to work really well. It's won us back-to-back -back titles in the previous two seasons. It's not an overly complicated approach, and it seems to maximize our strengths as well. So we're going to go with it for another one. And We've had plenty of strengths in this season, and it seemed like those strengths were pretty strong once again this year because, well, the league was an utter cakewalk again. What's that? We won loads of games, scored loads of goals. Hang on a minute. What's that music that's playing? Montage. Formality as expected, and we ended up on a very impressive 117 points. Just one loss all season. MBO scored 46 goals all competitions, and we celebrated every goal like this. Nathan Butler or your day G. Chucky then went one better and got 65 goals in all competitions, including 50 in the league, and we celebrated every goal like this. Caleb Chuckwoo. And then finally, our final key player, really, if you like, Jamal Udani in midfield was imperious, as you'd have expected him to be. And he ended up on 28 goals in all competitions from a central midfielder, by the way. He doesn't have a song as well, so don't worry about that. Aside from the league, the main storyline of this incredible, incredible season, the FA Cup, it was quite the journey. We've got a good record in the FA Cup as well. First season, we made the first round proper. Second season, we made the second round. So third season here, you'd think we'd be aiming for the third round, right? The holy grail. That is the third round of the FA Cup. That round where the Premier League teams enter the fray. Surely that was the aim for this season, right? It started as it always had done for us. Some routine qualifying rounds where we dispatched opposition of a similar standing to us. First qualifying round, Sutton Common, 8-0. A walk in the park, if you like, because it's a common. Sutton is walk in the park. Goodbye. Second qualifying round, Curzon Ashton. We beat them 5-0. Third qualifying round, Buxton, another 5-0. Fourth qualifying round was Mask United. We beat them 4-0. And then easy as you like, we were in to the first round proper once again. A first test, if you like, as we moved into the first round, it was League 2 Stevenage, but they'd be cast aside 4-0. In round two, we'd interestingly avoid all of the League 1 teams that were in the pot and be drawn against Spalding United, who were in our own league. And I almost felt bad when we beat them 4-0 to knock them out because they'd had their own incredible cup run to get to this stage, but out you go, lads. Sorry about that. And that had a sailing through to that mystical, that mythical mecca of the third round of the FA Cup. <laughs> Further than we'd ever been before, and with the Premier League teams entering the fray, the potential to draw a giant. giant. 
But we drew Wrexham at home. Why do we keep getting home draws? An away draw to a big team would see us split the gate receipts and get a load of money. At least I suppose the draw gave us a chance to go through, which is exactly what we did. We beat them 2-0. We made our way to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Can you see why it's so sensational? This alone would have been quite the storyline, but that wasn't where we were going to leave it. Surely now, though, we draw a Liverpool or a United, right? Away at Anfield or Old Trafford. We, we were at home to Millwall. At home to Millwall. League One opposition, which was tricky, we still didn't get that big away draw, but somehow we are mixing it with these teams. We're not just mixing it with them, in fact. Go for Luther Williams! Yes! Come on! We're beating them. We beat them 2-0. What a performance. What a team. What a cup run. And that still wouldn't be the pinnacle of where we could get to. Because in the next round, the FA Cup fifth round, we would finally, finally get our Premier League draw. Brighton and Hove. Albion at home, annoyingly again. But Premier League opposition, they will be coming to Clane's Lane and our boys will be playing against Premier League players. And this then is where things get really crazy. As if they weren't crazy enough beforehand, Brighton then came to Clane's Lane. Before we discuss what happened in the game, I must also tell you that we'd picked up Kyle Hudlin. He's six foot nine. He plays as a striker and he signed on a free transfer in November. He'd go on to play his part in this game against Brighton. So I wanted to just mention that before we get into it. 1,300 fans packed into Clane's Lane to welcome the Premier League stars. Caicedo, Ben Tanker, Lamptey. And in a scrappy affair on the pitch, we needed a good old bit of FA Cup magic. And then, then this happened. All right, we're on the way. Come on. First 10 minutes, we look okay. <sighs> Evan Ferguson could save a conqua. Chucky's in. Chucky for 1-0. Oh, Doria Henry. Regan Clayton hits the bar. To do it, we're going to do Kyle Hudlin up front, see if he can become a hero. NBA's put it wide. It was blocked. NBA's onside there, I think. Hudlin, get in the middle. Cross it to him. Cross it to the big dog. There it is. Hudlin. Hudlin. <laughs> that scored. 1 0, full time. Giant killers, Worcester City. And yeah, of course, Hudlin's got a goal song. Come on. For every cross in the box we do, no matter when or Kyle where Hudlin. or who, he's always looking down on you. Who is you. it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's Hudlin. Somehow, little old Worcester City had made the FA Cup quarter finals. Surely now, surely we'd get that big draw, the one that would make us all of the money that we needed. And we did. Newcastle away at St. James's Park, their 52,000 seater stadium, Worcester City would go to play. The greatest day in these players' careers, a bit different to hitching away the week before. The Newcastle team was strong as well. It included Alexander Isak, Alan St. Maximan, they had Christian Pulisic and Xavi Siemens in their midfield. We gave it everything. I'm sure people would have expected a thrashing here. Not our boys. No, we fought tooth and nail and howled out until the 71st minute. Nil-nil until then. And then Isaac finally broke our resolve. 1-0. The journey was over, but what a journey. What a run. What a football team. Something I'm not sure I'll ever be able to recreate or replicate ever again. A team in the seventh tier of English football making it to the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Truly, truly incredible. A joy to behold. And besides, we did crash out of the FA Cup, but we did get a million pounds in the process. So maybe Steve can book that holiday to America now. Are you serious? We go again next year as we make our way up to the Vanarama National League North for season four. Will this be the season where we finally have a bit of a challenge in the league? Will this be the season where we go and win the FA Cup? I mean, I wouldn't put it past these boys. They are that Good. What a load of heroes. What a season. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, what a season.